what you normally ask those questions. And, and okay. Um, Good evening, gentlemen of the press. Um, I came to Villa to see Mr. President uh, to discuss about uh, road infrastructure. And uh, I want to thank God because uh, Mr. President approved all my requests. And this request, I request that we renew the hopes of Nigerians on our road sector development. The approvals we rejuvenate proper road construction. But let me clarify a number of issues, uh, especially for the benefit of Nigerians and our stakeholders. There have been a kind of campaign by some quick fix contractors and some elements you know, within who do not wish us well, who want us to continue with the old order. But we can't continue to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. The truth is that our roots are not good. The truth is that the past government he marked a number of rules which Mr. President inherited. Close to, uh, it's about 18,897 kilometers of road, totaling 14 trillions. And by the mechanism of uh, funding, by the ingenuity of uh, our President Bola Ahmed Tenibu, we are sure of uh, funding of about 5.1 trillion, then leaving 6 trillion gaps. And this 6 trillion funding gap is as at um, May 29, 2023. And so if we go by the level of argumentation and price increases, which is one of the basis of uh, in our fight, if there is anything like fight, is that we don't have this 6 trillion to complete this project based on the what we inherited. And if we allow the escalation, both in terms of scope and in terms of uh, you know, variation on price, then we are very sure that we will not be able to complete even 20% of the present route going on. And I want to thank Mr. President very highly. He's a man that is committed to change things in this country. Any other president would have come and say, oh, let me start my own projects. But no, he has not started any new project. He's committed to the completion of this 18,897 kilometer of road. And I want to thank him. It shows that governance is continuity, and it shows that it's all about uh, the welfare of the people. And so where we are now is a fight that if you want to do asphalt work, Nobody has told contractors not to do asphalt work. But there are conditions. Nigerians are witnesses to the failure of asphalt, especially in the uh, north central part of this country and the entire southern part of this country. And the reason is not far-fetched. You know, we have a lot of rainfall in these locations. We have very high you know, underground water. And so asphalt definitely is a big problem. But if you insist you want to do asphalt, not a problem. But the conditions are that you will guarantee Nigerians that when you finish this asphalt road job, which you are very sure of, it will not fail within at least 15 years. The design shelf life is 20 years. But assures in writing from a reputable insurance company and from your own company that this road will not fail within 15 years. We are witnesses to see all the road constructed from Wari to Bayelsa to Port Harcourt, East West Road. They have completely failed. They are constructed on asphalt. Sometimes they construct this road below the floodplain. And so that is number one. Number two, 
when I came on board as minister, the cost of bitumen was 576,000 per ton. Today, the cost of bitumen, the same bitumen, within six weeks, is 1 million per ton. And for you to increase any project, it has to go to the uh, Bureau of uh, you know, Public uh, you know, Procurement, and it has to also come to FEC, Federal Executive Council. And so with this kind of mechanism on the volatility of uh, the international oil market, which has the consequences on the asphalt, because it's a byproduct of refinery, and also the dollar pressure, the pressure on the Naira, we are saying, if you are doing asphalt, please let us have a contract so that you will not vary the contract beyond 5%, which is what is allowed in the contract. So, and you are not going to import adulterated bitumen. Why is it that when you bring bitumen here, you are putting modifier, enhancer, this and that? The question is, in overseas, do they put all these things? So why would you allow adulterated beauty men, and then you come here, you say you are putting modifier, you know. And we are witnesses that in the 50s, the road constructed on asphalt in the 50s were much more durable than what we witness today. So this, are, this is all that we are saying. We are not saying people should not, you know, construct roads on asphalt. But if Nigerians are saying they should not have value for their money, that roads should be continue to be constructed every year, the same road, then it's very unfortunate. And that is what my ministry is fighting. And we are ready and very courageous to defend this. A land that is gang up by contractors, but there is no going back. And Mr. President is backing this position. We are offering alternative. And what is the alternative? The alternative is what high tech is doing in Lagos with Dangote. The alternative is for you to go to a Papa Oshudi Expressway and see what they are doing on concrete. Every day you have over 500 static loads from the wharf loaded on that road. You will not see any crack. No asphalt work, no matter who did it, can sustain that. And so we are saying that concrete is very friendly with water. And so we want you contractor to have an alternative. There is a catalyst in the use of concrete pavement. It will create jobs for our people. Everything about the construction is local. It, 10 manufacturers of cement have indicated interest to build cement factories. That is good for economy. It will reduce pressure on the Naira. The road is going to be much more durable and some people say it's more expensive. It's not more expensive. Some people put even three binders on their road construction, and yet the roads will fail. So this is the alternative we are offering, and it's not by force. And clause 51 of the general conditions of contract, which form part of the contract we signed with the contractors, allows us to do this. And that clause says that the employer, which is Mr. President, represented by the Honorable Minister for Works, shall have the powers, the legal rights, the liberty to change the quality of an ongoing contract, to change the quantity, to change the scope, to change the quality. And this is what we are leveraging on to do. And I want Nigerians to support that our road should be constructed on concrete. And of course, it's going to bring a lot of our local contractors to come and compete and create jobs and reduce capital flight. There is no amount of gang up within and outside that is going to change this. So far, we are fighting for the interests of the people, backed by God and approved by Mr. President. There is no going back. I need the support of Nigerians on this renewed hope on our uh, 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 broad sector. If you go from here to Lokoja, to Benin, to Wari, there are no roads. You see queues by tanker drivers. I got a warning letter from uh, Nupeng threatening to down you know, the, 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 their services if the roads in Wari, Benin, Port Harcourt are not fixed. 
we have directed the contractors to go and start meaningful work. After 14 days, as allowed in the contract, any contractor that fails to be on site doing permanent work, we have his contract terminated. That's what the law says. And I want to assure contractors that our local people can do this work and do it very well. So there is no need of meeting because the contracts were signed individually. And so if you are meeting to present a common front to frighten me with a very high cost of, uh, you know, uh, concrete cost, it's a waste of time because you all have concrete cost in your bills you signed. So what I do is to come and combine your concrete cost and your, you know, reinforcement cost and give you a cost for placement. And that's what the contract allows. I want Nigerians to understand what is going on and I won't stop shouting this. There is no secrecy. It is taxpayers' money and Mr. President wants to reset this country. He wants to make a difference. And you know that root is everything in this country. It reduces kidnapping. It creates jobs. It creates economic activities. It increases the GDP of the country and that of the states. It helps in agriculture, in education, everything. If you cannot interact, then there is no growth. And so this is very important. And then we are going to do everything to get this done. And let me also announce to uh, Nigerians that Mr. President is a listening president. All the intervention we requested in our east-west route, in Benin, uh, uh, Sapele Road, in Lokoja, in Shandam, Lafia, a bridge that, uh, you know, uh, uh, got broken, in the two bridges in Enugu that got broken, you know, where on the Shah Road that got broken at two points, the Tom Mainland Bridge resurfacing, and the underdeck work. I can't finish all. They have been all been approved by Mr. President. So we have set up tax force in all the locations where this approval you know, were made by Mr. President to ensure that within three months, we conclude all that is needed based on the approval. And let me also announce that we have tax force that will supervise contractors all the way from Lokoja to Benin, to Wari, to Bayosa, to River State, and the Cross River. And uh, we are going to also do the same thing as the time goes on. We are also deploying consultants to supervise our routes. Our engineers will also be on site to learn from the experience of these consultants. Mr. President has also given approval. And that has been the practice before. When the consultant now value work, then the engineers of the ministry will now check what they have done. So that checks and balances. You cannot originate the work, do the BEME, do the drawing, be the supervisor, prepare bill of quantities, and then give approval. There must be checks and balances. We have to bring the private sector into our road sector. In the, uh, the, 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 the task force we set up, we also included journalists, so that journalists will see what we are doing. All cars must be face up, and that is what the timing requires. That's what Renewed Hope Agenda requires. These are all that I discussed with Mr. President and I got approvals. And I need to also warn contractors. There are some contractors that have 20 jobs and they have two uh, equipment on site. It can no longer be the same. We have minimum requirement of equipment on site for a particular work. And if you don't have it, you will leave the site. Nobody can hold this country to ransom. Nobody. Our local contractors are advised to wake up. I did it in Ebony State. Every civil servant became an engineer. Our stakeholders became an engineer. We can do it again and again and again. But we welcome our expatriate contractors. We want them to respect us, to respect our culture. Because what is being done here cannot be done outside this country. We, they have to respect us. They have to respect the culture of this country. They have to respect the laws of the country. Many of the contractors that NAMPC paid have not gone to site. Some got 33 billion. They have not been to site. 
And I want the stakeholders to know that it's about our country. It's about our children. And this is very important. I want them to buy in, into this position. A lot of them are already in support of what Mr. President is doing in the direction of our own sector. So this is what I discovered, Mr. President, and I'm very happy that I got all my approvals. No, if you have Queen that are also fighting me, you know, who are also benefiting from the system, and that is the greatest problem we have, and they are just pretending. And uh, I will flush those elements out and send them to ICPC to handle them because nobody can hold this country to ransom. So I'm giving them the last chance to conform to what we help Mr. President to reset the country. So this is uh, the decision. And then we are also leveraging on the, the contracts we signed. It's 14 days we are going to give notice. I've had more than 10 different meetings with contractors where we de discuss this. We developed the design. We even developed the cost of doing concrete from the first principle. How much is cement? And the, the cement factories, the Dangote, the Bua, they have agreed to give special discount to our contractors who are going to engage on concrete roof pavement. And many contractors are already doing it. Not all the contractors are in this gang up. Many contractors have come to sign addendum doing the road pavement. Those who are meeting are going to be losers. And before them, they will see that we, we do the job and we will do it very well. Yes? No. We inherited 18,897 kilometers of road, worth 14 trillion. They are funding you know, uh, sources of 5.1 trillion. So we have a funding gap of 6 trillion. It's going to come from Mr. President in January. He will figure it out. You are, you are just asking a question for you have, uh, you know, it's a premeditated mind. Because I have explained myself here, yeah? and I've told you that asphalt inflection is on a geometrical progression. Whereas that of, uh, you know, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, concrete is on arithmetical progression. And there are so many advantages. We should grow our economy. You know, why do we need to import bitumen when everything we, we have is local? And there are a lot of advantages. What is my risk? Okay, even if taking it for that, I want to increase the local production of uh, cement. Is it not growing the economy? Is it not what you are saying? Is it not what the economic uh, principles are talking about? Why do you import when you can uh, leverage on what you have? You know. So, what is the growing the the distance of uh, you know cement distance? You know, sometimes people just look at the dark side of it without this thing. Okay. We are not saying that there should be no asphalt, but asphalt agree with us that your variation is going to be limited to 5% throughout the life of your project. That's all we are saying. And you guarantee that when you build this project, you are a very good contractor. You guarantee that it will last 15 years. And let me tell you something. In an international bidding document, and of course local one, if you're a contractor and you have a contract, the bidding document requires that you have gone to site, you've satisfied yourself with the conditions of the site, the geotechnical condition, the uh, physical condition, the flood level, everything about that. You've made yourself properly acquainted. And if there are things that you observe that were not there, you have to bid for it in the distance. And these are part of the technical and commercial evaluation. So people get to site and say, oh, the site condition have changed and they begin to increase the price of this. It will not happen under me. It's your responsibility to have checked and they even use your big company as you quoted to check uh, the soil condition and so on and so forth. The last question.
elements within him. Finish.